Hi, welcome to TLC's Creative Art Corner. I'm Miss Susan, and today we're going to dye pastas for some sensory activities for children that are kindergarten and lower, but also anybody can enjoy doing these. So let me tell you about the materials that we will use. First off, we have to have our protective wear. Okay, we have an apron on. I have gloves on this time because we're going to be dealing with food color. Okay, so we need food color for sure. And I was lucky enough to get all six colors of the primary and secondaries at our local store. Different size pastas to color. Some plastic bags, uh, Ziploc bags, or you can use these vegetable bags from the grocery store and we can reuse those and I'll show you how. Uh, you might want to have some paper towel, some, a little bit of water, maybe, maybe not, but you, you need to have that anyway. Um, measuring spoons, and then um, pipettes. These are pipettes. I, I don't know where I've gotten these over the years, but here they are to, to get the, try to get your fingers, clean, keep your fingers clean. Anyway, so I have various pipettes to take the food coloring into the solution. And then uh, white vinegar, this is distilled vinegar and it works fine. I don't know about any other kind of vinegar, but that's what I used, so that was good. And we always have our little cloth. Okay, and then some containers to, to work it at the end, how you wanna, the different activities we'll talk about. And for sure, wax paper. This is our wax paper, is it up there? Okay, and I already put a sheet here just for an added protection. So you for sure wanna protect your counter and your clothing, and I've already said that. Okay, great. So those are all the materials, and also an, an essence. I just picked up a rose essence from the grocery store. Um, some people say essential oils, but people, some people complain about the vinegar, but the smell of vinegar, but I don't smell a thing, but it's probably because I'm working with it. When you work with something, you usually don't smell it, and other people do, so, so there you have it. So if I put, just put a little bit in, I, get, I don't think there's a smell at all. It just kind of cancels it out. Okay, I have yellow, a, you know, a little bit of, Yellow, green, a little bit greener, green, blue, green, blue, red, orange, yellow, orange, you know, all the way around the, the color wheel. And then I made up some brown as well, and I just put all the colors in and made up some various kinds of brown. And I always forget to do this myself, but since I had gloves this time, it wasn't a concern for me. But normally what I try to remember to do is to put hand cream on my hands before I begin or olive oil or coconut oil and sort of saturate my fingers. And then if I get the food coloring on my fingers, it's much easier to come off. It might not all come off, but it'll be a lot less than what it was. And then when I go to clean up, I take baking soda and I pour it on and then some vinegar and I wash, scrub, scrub, scrub. And then it doesn't seem to be quite the problem that it is without doing those little precautions. So that was something I wanted to share with you. Okay, great. So while well, you can press pause, go get your materials, come on back, and we'll start this activity together. Welcome back. Before we begin, I want to tell you where I did get these ideas off the internet. One was blueandhazel.com and the other was powerfulmothering.com. And these sites seem to specialize in activities for preschoolers. So that's what I wanted to focus on today was activities for preschoolers. So to begin, we're going to start with our plastic bag. And I'm going to take my one tablespoon measuring. And it's a little tricky here. You might, if you had another thing to put it in, you could, but you know, I, I do everything a little. So if it, it's a little more uh, than this, that's fine. You know, just squirt it in. Okay, and then I'm going to take my color, mix it in. Okay, and since I don't have violet in my collection here, and I was able to find this violet color the other day, I thought, oh, we're going to go for this. Okay, let's try, because, you know, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 14, 15, 16, 17. All right, I did 17. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, now I'm going to add just a little bit of essence, a couple drops, just to see what it does. This is a rose colored thing. All right, and then I'm going to squish it, be sure it's all mixed. Okay, that looks all right to me. Yes, it's a nice purpley color. I don't know if you can see that. You can get a close up of this. Well, this is what how much color I put in. But if you don't like it when you put in the noodles, then you can always add more. It won't hurt it, you know, once they're in. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of everything in that I've got. I have my noodles here already sort of measured out. Okay. These big ones. Okay, let's see. Okay, I 
think I'll add a little bit more of these little ones. These are fun to string. And some of these. Okay, well. All right, I think that looks like enough for this bag, okay? Yeah, that looks pretty much like a good cup. Okay, and then I'm gonna seal my bag, get the air out of it. Okay, pretty much all the air. And then, if you have toddlers, this is the thing to do. You could put this in another Ziploc so it's safe, or you can go ahead and put it in here, like this, mm -hmm. and maybe tie it, I'll do this, get the air out of it. Just because you're gonna, you know, little kids like to, to squish this around to get the color around. So I'm going to do that, okay? And then I'm going to shake it around and get the color to go everywhere. See how it comes out. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going to look at it. Now when I'm doing this myself, I didn't put it in the separate bag, but if you're going to have kids that want to squish it around, Okay, this didn't take a lot of color. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and add more because this is very light. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, yeah, it didn't take any color at all. I'm not happy. Okay, okay let's see. You can always add more. It's not a crisis. Okay. I'll just give it, give it some generous squirts. And what I've noticed about these different pastas, uh, different brands, although I only have one brand, I believe, is what I got, um, that they don't all take color the same. You know, they don't all take... And like, for example, also you're influenced by the color that these are already a yellow, so you are, it, the color you put on it is slightly influenced by that yellow color. Like, for example, also I did the uh, yellow. I had to put a lot of yellow in, and these particular bow ones... Um, didn't always get the color, did not always go inside. And it, was, it was quite challenging, some of the colors. And sometimes this, this particular snail-looking thing, uh, the color didn't take either in places. But I think it's just a matter of letting it sit or having enough color on them. And one of the um, recipes said, you know, you could just use food color by itself. You know, and you would probably get a very, very intense color. You know, or even a little less liquid would, you know, I don't know. So anyway, the thing that they all said was you play around with it. You play around with it and you're going to find what works the best for you. Okay, I'm going to let this sit a few minutes because that's what I did at home. I let it sit for about 10 minutes. So we'll just let it sit and then we'll come back to it. We would also, you know, I'm only doing one color because I've got all mine prepared already. But I would, you know, do this color and then do the next color, the next color, and the next color. And then by the time I had everything done, I could come back to this, open it up, and put it out. So I'm going to do that. Let's pretend we're doing that, and then I'll come back. It's been about 10 minutes that I've let this sit, so I'm going to open it now. And one thing, now, now when you're still patting it at the end, because it's so much fun to pat, um, it might feel like the noodles are going soggy, but that's when it dries out, it'll be absolutely hard as rock, like the, the same way it began. So I wouldn't worry about that. Okay, and then when you open it, okay, you want to see if all the liquid is, you know, either if there's any liquid, you would take it like this and try to get some liquid out if there is any. But this doesn't seem to be any liquid in there. It was all absorbed, which is good. Okay. All right, so it doesn't seem like that is a problem. So I'm going to take my wax paper. Some people used, um, talked about using paper towels for this, but I think that being wet, it would, the, would stick to the paper, and that would not be, it would just be a mess. So we're going to do this. I like the wax paper, in my experience, was better. So I want to get all these out. And sometimes you can clean the bag and use it again, you know. See what, you know, but, and then I'm going to lay these out so that they're not, and then I'll put them out in the sun in my hall. I'll put them outside for about 10 minutes, not even 10 minutes, I'm sure of it, depending on how hot it is where you live. There is a recipe that uses uh, rubbing alcohol instead, but because we're dealing with toddlers, you know, and they like to put things in their mouth, as you well know, 
that, um, you know, I wouldn't let them do this, play with these uh, unsupervised, because you do want to, you know, they, this is something they, they're probably familiar with and would put it right in their mouth because they know what, it, what pasta is. Um, yeah, but I think that vinegar would be a little bit more safe than rubbing alcohol. This is our purple color. You know, it was, was influenced by the yellow, and yellow and purple are going to make a slightly brownish color. If pasta came white, it would be beautiful, but that's how it is. So we're not going to complain. This is just how it is, okay? We're gonna go with the flow. All right, so we're gonna put this out in the sun to dry and then we'll come back and I'll show you some activities you can do with your dried pasta. Now that we have our dyed pasta, let's talk about some of the activities that we can do for sensory and motor control, for developing motor skills in young children. So one thing you could do is have all these different pastas as one color and then have them divide the shapes, you know, because we have this kind, we have this little thing. I don't know what the names of these are. Okay, we'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, this kind, we have the big one. I mean, you would have these in different containers. Of course, I don't have all these containers. I have a small elbow macaroni. Do I have the twisties? Yeah, I think that's all I have. Maybe I have some bows here. I didn't have, I know I didn't do any bows. Okay, so that you, you know, they could divide the shapes. Okay, so that's one thing. And all, so all of these kinds of activities add to their motor skill development and their problem solving skills. So you wanna try to start this as young as we can with them. But again, this is a kind of activity you might wanna do under supervision with them. And then they love to scoop things up and you could mix them all the colors together or they could separate the colors, not only the shapes, but they could separate colors if you put them in a big bin. You know, they could just practice scooping out and putting them in uh, glasses or cups or something. You know, lots of things you can do with them. But also, we can make necklaces, like, you know, for grandma. You know, she'd have to put her rubies and diamonds away because this is what it would be all be about. I've also made another one where we just, you know, and they can do this with patterns and, and practice making different patterns or counting, especially on, this is on a shoe, shoelace. You know, so there's lots of things around the house. We don't have to buy a thing. We've got all this stuff, yeah. So let's put that aside. And let me show you um, one activity with this, um, what do you call this, bag from the store that I've always been talking about. Okay, so I already strung up some. I thought last time we did a sun catcher. This time let's do a wind chime. So that would be a, a sound thing for the kids. So I'm gonna put this aside. Okay, so what, what I'm going to do with this, I've already strung up a bunch. So here's one and I strung up, this was on a ribbon. So you wanna either have ribbon, yarn, or some string, so you could string some of these up and the kids would have you know, either a frustrating time or a fun time. But even, you know, t teenagers are gonna to wanna to make all this jewelry, I mean, look at that. If you had elastic, which I could not find, you could put on an elastic and then have a bracelet. You know, lots of things, you know, the, as, as the kids get older, they can play with, it's lots of fun. This, I really like this idea here. Anyway, so that was one, and I, I put different sizes of the elbow macaronis on there. Okay, and then I practiced some patterns here. Whoops. Okay, with just another color, and then I put the bow down at the bottom. And that, that took a while to get glued on right, but I got it on there. So as you can see, I did many different patterns, different styles. So this is great learning activities for kids, you know. So. Yeah, I think this one is a little shorter. Now, I think I, my theory is when these click in the wind, you know, because there's different lengths, maybe they'll sound different and the different shapes will sound different, okay? And this one I just chose colors that I liked. I really did like this kind of thing together. And I thought the bow at the bottom or heavy thing at the bottom would give it some weight to move around. When we begin to string, if you're using string or yarn, uh, it's a good idea to take some tape, I'm using masking tape, but you can, so I would go ahead and put a tape like around the edge and it will help when you have to put these through the different things. Sort of determine a length and then a tail. And so I'll just cut off that mark. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna put a big knot at the end so that nothing can go through here. So somewhere around there. So I always like to have this tail in case I wanna stick something on it. So I just did a couple of knots to stop the noodles from going through. Okay, this aside. For example, I'm going to take, these little ones are stuck together. See, it might, makes it go through much easier. And here, sometimes these, did I do that? Okay, okay. 
Okay, so that's how you would do it. If you wanted to change, you could put a big, um, a long one here. go right through. See this helps it really go through. It keeps it stiff and you're not dealing with all the frays. And then the curved ones, here's a little curved one. It'll help when you push it, it'll help it you're able to bring it through. Okay. And then if you did another one, does I have an orange one here? Yeah. See it gets curvy and you're able to put it through. Yeah. Sometimes I use a, a twizzer, tweezers, okay. And then you can make the like this okay so it's connected there next one you know you're able to really spin these around quite well and the same thing down here you know it, it can come like that but sometimes they go every which way but you know there's the idea sometimes these big ones I had a hard time gluing them down I glued them here and it just they it just I don't know maybe it's because I was over anxious but they did glue eventually because I used this glue I don't know how white glue would be now this particular type of noodle seems to be squished at this end, so using this isn't going to help. Okay, so uh, what I would did then was when I used the mylar one. So that was one string. We just got that started. Here's the mylar. This is that ribbon, and I can, okay. So this one's at a diagonal, and at this end I'm going to go ahead and put a knot. On. But then if you glued something at the like this at the end. It won't have that problem. So I'll do one more. And then what I do, um, this angled edge, I put, I feed it in here. But this one looks like it's a little closed. No, no, it'll be okay. Yeah. And this, because this is a stiff ribbon, it does go through. Sometimes I use my tweezers if it gets stuck in there a little bit. See, I'm able to just pull it right out. Okay. All right, so there's, and because this ribbon seems to go one way, I want to try to feed the next one in the other direction. Let's pick an orange one. But I'm still going to go in this small, small thing, this small slot here. Where is it? And it, it the ribbon sort of curled one way. Another little thing in there. Okay. There we go. I'm having a hard time even finding the hole. There we go. There, and it comes right out. Okay. But I have to. So that it still maintains this curl thing. But if they went one way, I don't know. Okay. So there you have that. Let me put another one. So this is, you know, you decide, or the child can decide how they want to, you know, do this and, you know, their jewelry and whatnot. What I did here with my um, bag, because this already has a hang around it, I thought I will cut this here and then glue in the inside these ends and then put another piece on top of that. So that's what we're going to try to do and see how successful we are. This is my outside. I already cut it and I cut the backing for it and I decided, okay, so this is going to be sandwiched inside. So this is going to go face down. And these don't have to be, you know, some can hang down in their space here so that they, so that in the wind, you know. This might be a fun thing in, a, in the kid's room to put along the top of the window to have these things hanging down. And I think the sun would probably shine through them and give it a little bit of, you know, brightness in the room. These can be different lengths, you know, that's okay, different lengths, okay. So I'm just trying to organize these down. I glue these evenly across. This mylar is going to be all over the place, but okay. All right, so I'm going to take my glue. Let's see how this goes. I don't know. There's all these different glue things. Okay. Uh, you can decide how many strings you want hanging down. You know, probably four is probably fun. Take this one then, and actually I should put some glue on. You mean you could tie these onto a you know, a paper clip or something and instead, you know, however you want to, you know, hang it in your home. This is just one thing I wanted to try. And, you know, it's already got the nice little handle there. Okay. And then I would press this down, maybe put paper clips to let it dry a while. I do, since I don't have paper cups, I will take my water cup here and set it on top of it or something heavy, you know, 
want to let it, hopefully, it'll have to sit. And I would leave it there for a few minutes. Yeah, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, it's starting to stick here and here. So we'll see how that goes. And we'll let it dry for a few minutes. And then we'll come back and look, see how it is. I've waited for this to dry and uh, we will see how it goes. Okay, but before I pick it up, I'm going to cut this off. This is the moment of truth. Now you be careful, you don't want to cut off the, the bag handle that was, I could put some decoration on here or I could even, you know, glue some of these down, you know, to fill in some spaces. Well, let's get some, you know, we could do something. Okay, we could glue those on on both sides so it looks very, let me hold it up and let's see what it does. Okay. If this doesn't work, you have to, we'll have to find another way to hang this, which, you know, not a problem either, um, really. Okay, let's see what we have. Oh, beautiful. There's some spark, you know, some sparkle from the ribbon, especially down at the bottom. And so I think, you know, you get some nice sounds from it when it, when it catches. But I think just hanging there, it's really kind of fun. And of course, a little kid would love to look at the colors, you know, and yeah, it's quite okay. So this is a nice little sensory project. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this project. This is like wind chimes, not too unlike our sun catcher from last week. And again, you could, you know, uh, when it's really thoroughly dry. Uh, I would actually, I think, because these are young kids, I'd go with white glue, I think. I think this is a little little strong glue, but it, you know, I think white glue might be the way to go. But if this doesn't work, you know, you could just tie knots here, like on this one. Tie like a slip knot or just even tie a loop. You know, you guys are really creative. I know that because I see it all the time. So thank you for showing up, and I hope you have a blessed time doing this. And uh, make some jewelry, remember, you know, because we always want to look good. Okay. Here are our dried pasta that we did in the violet color. And um, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So, um, yeah, I would have incorporated them into our activity today, but these were out there drying. But, I used, you know, so now you know the process. And you can do this with all the colors or one color, whatever you want to do with your pastas. You know, it's up to you. Please send us your creations. I'd love to see them. We love to see them. They're just fantastic because you kids are so creative. All right, to M-A-E-B-E-A-T at yahoo.com or to administrator at tlckuwait.com. And we will get these posted because it's so much fun to see your work up there. All right, bye-bye. I'll see you next time. Have a blessed week.